and welcome back to the Ghost Biker Garage. I'm your host, the Ghost Biker. I'm sorry, my voice is <clears throat> kind of going out just a little bit. I've been talking a lot today, so hopefully I'll be able to keep that through the episode. But hope you guys are having a great week and uh, having a great start to uh, start to the month of May. We are halfway to uh, Halloween, which I know a lot of you guys are excited about. We got uh, Michelle, we got Chris, Janet, Peppy. Hello, everyone. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And speaking of Halloween, I know that my guests tonight are uh, very excited about that because they host a podcast that deals with spooky stories as well as um, anything, sp spooky stories, demons, uh, the home, excuse me, homegrown stories that uh, are told by the folks who have experienced them themselves. They uh, host the uh, popular podcast Homespun Haints, which is a podcast that celebrates the oral tradition of storytelling as an art form, which is something that is very important to me because if you guys watched my episodes and watched the shows, storytelling is a big part of what we do. So they've got a lot to talk about. So I'm going to go ahead and bring them on. I hope you guys will help me welcome Becky and Diana. Hey, ladies. Hello. Hi there. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for coming. Oh, thanks so much for having us, Miranda. This is awesome. Very yeah. excited to be here. Yeah. So, you know, same thing I tell everyone every week. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them into the chat room live stream over here. We'll pull your comments up onto the screen. And once we kind of get a break in our conversation, we'll ask your questions. So feel free to go ahead and put those in there. So do you ladies want to tell me a little bit about yourselves and, and kind of how you got started with Homespun Haints? <clears throat> Sure, I can start. So um, I'm actually from not too far away from you. I grew up in Northeast Tennessee. And it's, uh, as, as you know, storytelling is a very big part of the culture there. So I grew up hearing all these great ghost stories. And they were all real ghost stories, things people had experienced. And I just loved it so much. And this podcast had been kind of gnawing in the back of my head for a while, even before podcasts were a thing, I was like, I wonder how I can sort of bring that that ghost story tr telling tradition to the world and, and do something really interesting with it. And I roped my friend Diana into it. I said, hey, come on this journey with me. Let's have some fun. And, <laughs> and Diana- I was buying <laughs> tickets before you ever invited me. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I grew up in the, in the Midwest where it's, um, you know, I was a spooky kid in a non-spooky environment. So I, I felt a little bit more alone in my love of scary tales and campfire tales. And knowing Becky has really opened that up for me. So, <laughs> How did you all meet? <laughs> That's funny that you ask because <laughs> we literally just interviewed just this week the person who introduced us, her wife was on our most recent uh, episode um, that's going to air in the future here. So look out for that. But um, basically, we just knew each other as, as our friend Courtney's cool neighbors for a while there. <laughs> <laughs> in so, Arizona, so anybody who appreciates bike culture, you know, we, we were not bikers, but lived in Daytona for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I don't I don't know if you've ever done bike week uh, in in Daytona. Yes. So, yeah, so that was that. So you've, you've been there. That was that was where we lived. And um, I was there because my husband was going back to school and Diana was going back to school down in, in the Daytona Beach area. And we all lived in the same apartment complex. And we just started getting together and uh, watching Ghost Hunters together Monday nights. <laughs> hey, what better way to bond, you know? Through, right, yeah. Through the paranormal and are, are either of you all paranormal investigators or are you more into the storytelling? We are not um, yet. Maybe one day. <laughs> Maybe somebody will invite us to come along one day. Uh, but we we have not done any of our own official investigations. We are right now more focused on the storytelling side of things, but we wouldn't turn it down if we had the opportunity. Exactly, but it, it would be more tagging along to go, ooh, 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 <laughs> than, than actually like study the results. I don't, I, I think both of us are kind of like, okay, that's other people's wheelhouse is proof and investigation. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is just break out the flashlight and campfire and just kind of like, 
get their yeah. pants off each other. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> well, that's one of the things I love about your show, though, is because you have the, those great stories and you get to see the reaction and that sort of thing. That's, that's one of the things that's, that's really cool about that. Um, you know, and actually we have a, uh, a question here already, Janet, and she's actually from Arizona. So she says, what does a haint mean? All right. Well, haint is a term that's used throughout the, the South. Um, it actually comes originally from the low country. It was a mm -hmm. gula word. And since then, it has moved into Appalachia, where I'm from, and Georgia, and North Carolina. And it basically means a ghost or a spirit, but not one you want in your house. So it's it's kind of a negative energy. Um, yeah, so, so we, we actually, you've probably seen houses that have a blue uh, ceiling on the porches. That's called haint blue, or sometimes in the low country, you'll see uh, framing around windows and doors painted with this color it's to keep the haints out so if you're ever in the paint store and you see haint blue that's what it's all about <laughs> yeah you see a lot of that in uh, savannah in the charleston area yes exactly is, is that a term that you grew up with Just it is up? yeah it is um and i know i've used it several times when when i've been talking about stuff because my grandmother when she would always tell us the stories from the appalachian mountains that's what she always called them was haints yes. or book Yes, hates are boogers. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, I didn't even realize that it was haunts or haunted until I got older, probably about the time that I was going off to college. I realized that it was haunted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of like we call, you know, Vienna sausages vineys, you know. Right, you see right, it spelled right. a certain way, but you know, <laughs> but it's, you know, it's just how you always know it as. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So how did you come up with the name for, for the podcast? Kind of tying um, into that. Well, the, the word homespun comes from, you, you said homegrown and that's, that's absolutely correct. We're kind of looking for people who have their own tales to tell in their own words. And we specifically seek out people with personal experiences that want to tell these stories. And we're not looking for professional storytellers. We're looking for people who have, have something inside of them that they need to share. And, um, and it always comes out sounding great. It, it's always comes out sounding great, but it, it has that homespun quality to it. And then of course, Haint, I, I just had to, I had to give a shout out to my roots there. So that's where it came from. Awesome. Awesome. I was just looking here to see if there were any questions. You guys have some, some fans here. I know several people who have been on your shows in the past. I know we've got uh, Dr. Sumner from Soul Sisters Paranormal. Hey, hey. And that's actually how I ended up meeting you guys was being on your show and uh, talking about a story that uh, that you are actually familiar with. I mean, it wasn't planned when I was going to come on and started talking about it. And that was really cool to meet someone else that had actually grown up here in that same story. Likewise, I was so thrilled that the, the story of that monk was one of my favorite stories as a young child. I was probably like eight or nine when I first heard that story and just fell in love with it. I, it just creeped me out. <laughs> so, I mean, to hear that you had actually been in the house that had the bathtub where the monk's bones were stripped. It was just, oh, it was <laughs> all the good feels, all the good feels. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm actually going to go ahead and show a clip since we've got, you know, a pretty good group on here right now. Um, the ladies have provided me with one of their new promos. So we're going to go ahead and show that. And then we're also going to put in the post and in the comment section places where you can watch their past episodes as well as find them. So we're going to go ahead and show that now. Are They're always, always scarier. They're told by the very people who experience them. Hi, I'm Becky. And I'm Diana. And we're the hosts of the Homespun Haints podcast. We talk to people just like you who have come face to face with ghosts, demons, haints, and other strange paranormal phenomena. All of it makes for a chilling good time. So grab yourself a sweet tea, turn off the lights, and listen to some eerie, true ghost stories on Homespun Haints, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm not scared. 
Are you? Whoops. Awesome. I love it, ladies. Great <laughs> job. <you. laughs> um, let's see here. We just, ha I just saw a question here. Um, Dr. Sumner says, uh, since you started your podcast, is there an episode that stood out as the most surprising to you? Hmm. That's a really good question. What do Diana, you mean by do surprising? You <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I got to say the thing that surprised me most was our episode Raised by Demons. Uh, our guest Echo um, just had some really like intensely positive spin on her life which she and her mother believed that she was raised by demons. I mean, it, it's just, it, it, it totally took me for a loop to hear the story and her very positive spin on it. And then at the end of it, she said, yeah, you should put my phone number on the episode so people can contact me if they have questions. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the most surprising thing that we've heard <laughs> so far. But um, I don't know if that's what you meant, Chris. <laughs> Well, I, I like we actually, actually, our our, our um, one of our recent episodes with Franz, he also had some similar takes on it. He um, he, I, I thought he had a really interesting way of dealing with. He he's he's pretty much a medium. He's seen things his whole life, and he has just kind of learned how to get along with the entities in his home or whatever. And he's like, you know what? They could be kind of useful sometimes. Like they'll let you know if a storm is coming or <laughs> they'll kick people out of the house that you don't like. They'll make them uncomfortable. And so I thought that, you know, usually we talk to people, they're trying to figure out how to get rid of stuff. But he was like, oh, I just, I just kind of figured out like, you know what? I'm just going to let you hang out. You have your room. I have mine and we'll just be cool. <laughs> so how do you uh, go ahead? No, no, what are you going to say? I was going to say, how do you find some of the folks that come on? Do they uh, reach out to you as far as submitting their stories? Or are these people that um, you seek out? How does some, one go about that? It's probably about half and half. Um, we, we have been doing this long enough that we do have enough people that know about us and have started to reach out to us. We do have a form on our website where people can submit stories. If, if they have a ghost story and they feel comfortable sharing it, uh, we, we love to have people come on and, and talk about it. And even if they don't have anything they wanna promote, sometimes they say it feels really good. If they've been like mm -hmm. holding something on their chest, they say it's really cathartic to get the story out. And then we also know a lot of people that have had experiences so just from what we do. So we definitely do a lot of outreach on our own as well. Well, have either of you ever had a paranormal experience of your own? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Why well, it's funny you ask. <laughs> um, Becky just had a paranormal experience just a, a, a couple of days ago. Oh, yeah, that's it. Okay, so this is a little bit of a spoiler. This is going on our next episode. So if anybody's uh, listens to our show, you're, you're getting a preview. Uh, I, I went into, I, it was Monday, actually, I was trying to get my kids ready. If anybody out there is a mom, you know, after school, it's always a whirlwind trying to get the kids ready for their activities. And I was trying to get them into the car, get their instruments, because um, they had their music lessons. And I heard what I thought was my daughter go downstairs and into the garage and slam the door. And I thought, Oh, I looked over and her guitar was still on the sofa. So I thought, Oh, she forgot her guitar. So I went down in the basement into the garage and looked at my backseat of my car. Oh, and I should also say I left my purse with my keys in the car because I was like, we're just running in, we're running back out. So I look at the car and I say, are you in there? And I saw a little hand in the back seat, wave at me. And I thought, okay, she's in the car. And I said, you left your guitar upstairs. And I heard her three stories above me say, mom, I haven't gotten it yet. <laughs> wow. So I start to think, oh crap, somebody's stuck in the car. So I go to, to try and get in the car and see what it was I was seeing and all the doors are locked with my keys inside. And this is one of those brand new cars where it's got all these safety mechanisms so you can't lock your keys in the car. So as I'm going around all the doors, trying them, seeing if there's one that's unlocked, 
the door that I had just come through from the, the basement into the garage, the interior door, opened on its own. And I should also say this door sticks, so it's kind of hard to open and close. And I, of course, start yelling at my husband, can you come downstairs, unlock the car? I don't have my phone. It's stuck in there. I can't call him. And the kids are running underfoot and everything. And needless to say, I was just really annoyed. I was like, ghost, really? Now? <laughs> come back another time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I, I don't know any other explanation. I saw a hand. I saw wow. a small child's hand wave and then the door had the car had locked, the door opened. So we I've also seen something kind of short at night, like a shadow moving in the bedroom. So I think something's here. I think something might have followed me home <laughs> at some point. <laughs> so if you if you check out our podcast, um basically any episode that ends in a zero is going to have one of our personal paranormal stories on it. All of them are true and just from our firsthand account, um, just Very like cool. a normal show format. So. Very yeah. cool. So well, do you so, think it's connected to the house or do you sort of I, have those follow you? I think I've been told that since we are now doing this podcast, we're going to be more open to these things and more of these things are going to seek us out. So I think it's because I'm doing the podcast. I think something out there is like, oh, she'll listen to us. So that's because I, I I had a few experiences before we started this. Um, I, I Well, I had an entity that um, I, I'm sure was a ghost when I was a child. My family called it an imaginary friend, but it was like a 20-something man with some um, mental health issues. So I don't think it was an imaginary friend. I think it was a ghost. <laughs> And, uh, and then when I was, um, when I was in my, uh, yeah, w about 10 years ago, I opened an art gallery in a very historic area here north of Atlanta in a building that was about 200 years old. And there was definitely a ghost in that. And I ran it with my mom and my sister and we all experienced it. And we all just kind of got to the point where we were like, all right, there's a ghost. We'll just deal with it. In fact, there was a wall on of the gallery that would shake as if someone was banging on it with a hammer. And of course we would run next door to the, the unit that adjoined us and they hadn't heard it, even though we shared a wall and we just were like, okay, we're not hanging anything with glass on that wall. Just deal with it and move on. So that was, you know, I guess, I, I guess we're kind of like frauds. We're like, well, we'll just figure out how to live with it. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I've definitely, I've definitely had my share of experiences, but I'm, I'm trying to, have a sense of humor about it, but apparently it's still very scary. So, <laughs> and Diana, you, Di Di yeah, Diana, you've got, a few. I, I, I kind of straddled the line between believer and non-believer still, you know, no matter how much evidence is in my face, I'm like, well, but <laughs> what if I don't want to believe it's paranormal? <laughs> so I worked at a, a haunted museum when I was uh, younger. And then I worked at a, um, a haunted lodge, ski lodge, when I was 17 and just had all these really bizarre experiences kind of culminate on me each time being like, mm, maybe I'll just not say it's a ghost. <laughs> but it, I, I mean, you know, there, there are a lot of things in life that can't be explained. I'm, I'm willing to say that. <laughs> well, do, do you want to talk about your basement ghost? Cause I may or, I may or may not have have a ghost haunting my basement. Becky thinks I do. She dared me to go down there with a video camera and rock an empty rocking chair because apparently that's like a thing. It's a, it's a Tennessee <laughs> thing. Yeah, you don't do that. Thing, yeah. right? and, and I have been too afraid to do so. <laughs> <laughs> but there is there, there there yeah there is a rocking chair down there so. <laughs> <laughs> could happen one of these days we'll, we'll find out um, but I, I did get it was it was really exciting one night I actually spoke out loud to the ghost um, because I was feeling a chill on my neck and I was like okay I'm going to need you to leave because one of our guests had just come on and said oh well all you have to do to get rid of a ghost in your house is tell them to leave and I was like not confident I'm like okay I'm gonna tell her to leave you, you need to leave <laughs> And I heard, 
I was like, was that knock once for yes or once for no? I don't know. We didn't establish any ground rules. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I have I have had some activities since then, so I guess it was a one for no. <laughs> Do you have any interest in uh, finding out? I mean, would you ever contact an investigator to Are you come visit me in Oklahoma and check out my basement? Because sure, you know, I would love that. <laughs> sure, we'll load up the motorcycle, come out, and yeah. we can do an investigation. I'll grab Becky and yeah. Oh I yeah, I'm there. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing evil or harmful has ever happened. So I'm, I'm sure it's peaceful entity, whatever it is. I have also heard from one of our guests that it is a, a feminine motherly entity. So yeah, we have a lot of psychic mediums that come on the show, and so we we often will be like, "Hey, can we get a little free advice here about what's going on in our houses?" And they, sometimes we don't have to ask. And just <laughs> like, hey, do you have someone in your basement? Yes. We're filming here, so you can see what's going on, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, let's see. Um, Chris says, if you both could visit a haunted place, where would it be? Mm. Ooh, well, I mean, we that we haven't about, been to before, <laughs> right? I know, like, there are a few, but um, oh, that oh man, it, well, does it have to still exist? No, because <laughs> <laughs> that sanatorium that DC and Whitney talked about on our show just oh, felt yeah. like the most freaky place I've ever heard a story about. It was a, um, no, it was actually, it had been an abandoned nursing home, I believe. Yeah. And then before that, right. it was a school right. for troubled boys. It's called St. Albans and it's in yeah. yes. Colonial Williamsburg. Uh, so. Yeah, I was actually, uh, are you talking about the uh, one that was the boys school? And then now mm -hmm. it's, I was just there week before last. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I was. Oh, I, I, was thought, I thought it had been knocked down. No, no, it's still there. Of it's course. in uh, Radford, Virginia. And uh, it was supposed to, we were supposed to be doing a convention there. And I was going to be speaking with, um, I think, 17 other speakers. And uh, they ended up because of, you know, kind of what's going on right now with um, uh, things opening back up. They couldn't open up to enough capacity. So they went ahead and invited us speakers on up. And I investigated there uh, for the first time, um, investigated two nights and then did uh, daytime just kind of hanging out, taking pictures. And it was definitely one of the coolest places mm -hmm. uh, I've investigated in a long time, for sure. Oh, it sounds heard amazing. so many stories. I can't wait to hear your story about it. <laughs> well, I ended up doing uh, doing a live investigation that night. And oh. so, yeah, we had, um, we had, I think, seven of us on the second night. And we did a Estes Method, read um, the Jungle Book in one of the little boys' rooms, and uh, had some pretty cool activity going on during that 45 minutes. And then I broke off by myself and just kind of went exploring and got totally lost because that place is so deceptive of just how big it really is. And uh, uh, wandered around for probably about two and a half hours, just going to different rooms, doing different experiments and uh, captured it all on uh, Facebook Live. And we were getting some, some really cool activity. Uh, at one point, something started following me. And uh, they were able to hear that, yeah, on the recording. So it was, it was really cool. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know if that makes me want to go there more or less. Yeah. <laughs> well, and if it makes you feel any better, the activity is just as active during the day as it is at night, if not even more so. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, you know, I think the thing that would just scare me about that is the alone part. I think I'd be able to handle it as long as I was with other people, but the alone it's part, definitely different. Yeah. Well, that's, you're so brave. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's just something about that, just kind of wandering off, letting the location kind of call out to you and tell you, you know, 
like not really having a plan of where I'm going to go, just kind of go mm -hmm. see what I can find. Cause I honestly didn't know a whole lot about the location until I went. I didn't know many of the stories. I didn't even know the layout of it. And so um, that was completely different because I'm used to going in and, and kind of having everything really planned out just because of the way I have to pack. And uh, so this particular one, I really just let the location kind of, determine. And if I didn't get any activity, I was okay with that because it was cool just being live and, and uh, getting to ask questions and explore it. So we were just very fortunate we got activity while we were doing it. Yeah. So, so I know that was a live. Is there a place that it can be accessed now, the video? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's on, uh, I, I downloaded it, put it on the YouTube channel, and then okay. it's also on Facebook. So right. definitely check it out. And if you get the opportunity to go, you definitely need to check that out. Yeah. Well, I know what I'm going to be doing tonight. I'm, that. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. That's awesome. <laughs> so we had a question here about, I've got to try to find it, but they were asking Becky if you've investigated anywhere in Chicago. I haven't investigated, but or not um, investigated, but have any stories of anywhere? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Um, sh Chicago has so many wonderful ghost stories. Um, a lot of famous. I mean, we've got Bachelors Grove Cemetery just south of the city, which is considered to be the most haunted cemetery in the world. And there's Resurrection Mary, that legend of the the woman who asks for a ride and then takes you to the cemetery and disappears out of the back seat of your car. That's from Chicago. Personally, I, I think the most intense experience I had was when I lived I live by myself. I'm introverted. I loved living by myself. <laughs> and I uh, I was renting an apartment in Oak Park. So if you're familiar with Chicago, Oak Park is a suburb just to the west of the city. It's, it borders up against the city. The, the local train goes there. It's a very old city. It's very famous. It's uh, Frank Lloyd Wright um, lived there for a while and designed a, a very famous church there. And Hemingway lived there for a little bit. So it's got a lot of history and it's got a lot of really, really old buildings. And I lived in this hundred year old apartment and I knew when I rented it that something wasn't right about it, but it had a dishwasher. So <laughs> <laughs> I was sold. I was like, I'll deal with whatever. It's got a dishwasher. And um, I, almost immediately after I moved in, I started having these nightmares of dead children coming out of the walls and staring at me while I slept. And of course, I know it's just a nightmare. You know, you can't really, it's it's really hard to put your finger on if was I just nervous about being in a new place or were there really dead children in the walls? But I kept having more and more dreams about these things coming out of the walls. And at one point it got to a point where I started dreaming about some guy coming out and like drilling into my head with a power drill. And it was so intense that I actually, even though I was paying a pretty penny for this place and it was three miles away from work, I started staying at my boyfriend's parents' house, which was about 25 miles away from work because I was, the, the nightmares were just terrifying me so much. And I didn't have the nightmares when I was staying at his place. And then I got a kitten the very last month that I lived there. So I had to stay in the apartment because I had this kitten and the kitten would just disappear for hours. And I couldn't figure it out. How does a kitten get lost in a one bedroom apartment? <laughs> and I realized the kitten was disappearing into the wall. There was a hole. What? under one of the cabinets and it was there was enough space in there and the kitten was going in there and i was like oh okay <laughs> maybe there is something in the walls because they're wide enough or maybe they've been plastered over or something i mean i don't know but I, you know what i i i was happy to get out of that place very cute apartment wow <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's a little haunted. Yeah. <laughs> those those videos that they have where there's people living in the attic or living in the walls and the people thought that they had a haunting, but it was like an actual person. And so they put cameras out. It was this guy and 
he put cameras out and he caught this woman coming out of his attic of a night when she would get his food, she would move things around and she would go back up there. It was the most disturbing thing to me. Oh, that's horrible. Oh my yeah. gosh. I'm happy to just have a ghost. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd rather have a ghost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I would much rather have that than a real person. I think I'd rather have rats in my wall. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cat for this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I think she was mentally disturbed, the lady that was living up there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and there was another location that uh, uh, I investigated, uh, Henry River Mill Village. One of the stories they told about one of the houses that was in the woods, they had a uh, convict that was living under the porch. And he lived under the porch for a while. And they thought they were having some issues, but it was, and it was actually when it was an operational mill village person was just living under the porch. Oh well, my, my neighbors just posted on next door that they found like bed clothes and cans and stuff under their back porch. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> okay. On that note, <laughs> that's creepier than any, any paranormal investigation or anything that uh, absolutely yeah. that I've done. <laughs> so, um, so how how about you, uh, Diana? Any locations? Are there any particular locations or type of stories that you're drawn to? Um, I don't know if I'm drawn to any particular locations. I like places that are classically haunted. You know, where everybody says they're haunted. Everyone who goes there has an experience. I always try to go on ghost tours and such to, you know, see if I can catch whatever on camera or, or actually have an experience. Because I, I, you know, like I said earlier, I, I'm skeptical enough to go, well, my paranormal experiences, do they really count? I don't know. <laughs> but, um, so it, it, I, I actually did catch um, something on camera this past week. I was in Eureka Springs at the Crescent Hotel. Yeah. And uh, Becky posted my photo on Instagram because I was like, I don't know what this is. What is this? But apparently the, the hotel itself is haunted by the ghost of a cat that was the associate manager there for about 19 years. Uh, I took a couple of photos of the tour guide, just blah, 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 about the third floor hallway. And one of them had something in it that uh, a lot of people think looks like a cat. And I kind of think it looks like a cat. So anywhere I'm going to get yeah. an experience like that is good enough for me. <laughs> yeah. I love those stories about animal hauntings. I always think oh, those yeah. are, those are a lot of, a lot of fun. Um, let's see here. Um, so, so you all do something really, really cool with your episodes when you're introducing them that I kind of want to hit on. And I saw a comment about that a few minutes ago. I know that uh, Becky is a, uh, a uh, yeah, art artist as well as I am. And uh, I think that that's just, just the coolest thing, the way you all uh, introduce your shows. You want to talk a little bit about that? Oh, um, you mean with the, like the music and the um, yeah, music yeah. and the art and. Sure. Sure. Well, yeah, I'm a, um, so I'm a graphic designer by trade, but I've only recently started getting back into hand drawings. And so I have been doing a lot of uh, every episode. I do an illustration that accompanies it. Um, this past season, it was all ink, black and white. Um, and then this season, it's um, all done in, well, the regular episodes are done in pastel and the H files, which is a little separate mini series we have going on is done in watercolor. So throwing some color in, you know, every, every season you got to do something a little different. And mm -hmm. then um, I'm also a, a violinist. So I do all the music on my violin, which again, that's part of Tennessee, you know, <laughs> I remember growing up my mom dragging me to fiddle competitions and I was, I had like the, the dorky shirts with all the rhinestones and the, you know, the high waisted jeans up there with my <laughs> big poofy bangs fiddling around. So, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm glad I can uh, hope make, hopefully I can make my mom proud that I'm, I'm using that skill and <laughs> making music for the podcast. <laughs> now, see, that's cool. I, I didn't know that uh, you did your own music for that. That's, that's very cool. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of it stems from the fact that we're just really cheap. So we just want to do everything <laughs> on our own. <laughs> no, I, I think of it as creative. <laughs> Thank you. 
things. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm actually, artwork, yeah. but I, I, I do make um, I make sculptures for our Patreons every Halloween as a gift. But oh, very oh, cool. I have yeah. no talent with painting or drawing or music, so. Do those, uh, do you share, ever share pictures of those? Becky, do we have pictures? I um, yes, I believe we do. We should put that on our Instagram, but yeah, Diana made these cute little like tombstone Christmas ornaments. It was the cutest thing. <laughs> so yeah, Diana's very modest, but she's very artistic. She just doesn't, <laughs> she just doesn't realize it, but yeah. And she also does a lot of writing for the show as well. So. Very cool. Well, that's Very that's one of the things that that uh, I really like about the show is just your chemistry. I mean, you both have such a great sense of humor oh. and creative and uh, you just you know, you can just tell that you guys uh, have got this bond and this chemistry and it, it really shows through your shows. Very, you know, oh. very well put together and, and very entertaining to watch. Oh, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I actually had, I was going to see if I could pull it up here. I um, actually had a, I went and found it before. I'm going to see if it'll allow me to do it. Um, when I was on your show, uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so that was the intro to my episode um, about the monk's tub. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with that. I've, uh, I've I've been drawing a lot of skeletons lately. I feel like I practically had an anatomy lesson. So, <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. And then there's the the finished version. So, I'm I'm telling you, if you all ever uh, let's see if I can pull that off there, if you all ever uh, decide to sell any of those uh, intros. I definitely like to get a copy of that for my, my paranormal wall back there. Cause it's especially being a fellow artist. So yes. Very yes. Cool. Well, thank you. Yeah. We'll, we'll get around to it. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> so what all, what all is coming up? So I know you are going into, are you going into season three or, or are you in season three right now? We're in season three where, um, Maybe about, let's see, we started in February. So we are a couple months in and we've, um, we definitely have been pulling a lot on our um, paranormal podcast network. So we've got a lot mm -hmm. of other podcasters that have been coming on, which is great. And um, a lot of spooky podcasters that are doing shows where they're talking about, you know, um, very like like they're sort of giving information about different hauntings and stories and stuff but then when I reach out they're like oh yeah I have a ghost story so we do have some fabulous podcasters that have been on the show we are also doing our H file series right now which is um, we get a lot of submissions from people who have stories that aren't personal but they're still fabulous they're either family stories that have been passed down through the generations or they know a lot about the folklore of an area and so what we've done is we're doing eight episodes this year we've done two so far this this season we've got two more that are coming up and then we'll do four more in september october and that's been really cool because we are getting to explore stories from other parts of the world. We just had some stories from the Philippines. And then um, in two weeks, we're going to be airing some stories from Zimbabwe. So that is very exciting for us because we, we're, very, we're very ignorant. We're admittedly very ignorant about a lot of the folklore in these areas. And so we're going straight to the source and talking to people from there. And they have some great stories. So it's, it's really cool. So that's and, very cool. Anything you want to add, Diana? No, I just mean like it, it means so much to me to get these stories told by the people who live them and the people who are part of this culture and just having those voices across our platform is so great because at first when we started out, it was just us and we tried to tell stories of intrigue from different cultures and we're like, this isn't our culture. We, we need to have these people on speaking for themselves and we finally got that and it's so thrilling to me. And so yeah, yeah. the H-Files is it just amazing this year. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot richer. You know, they have they have that sort of cultural heritage to pull from, and um, I mean, like I feel that way when I tell stories from Appalachia. It's yes. you know, it's just it's part of my roots, and I mm -hmm. I know I know stuff about it that you're not going to know just from reading in a book. 
Exactly. So, and it's so different, yeah. even just in our country, it's so different just in the different regions, you know, because yeah. when, when I talk about certain things, it can almost sound foreign to someone that's in, in a completely different area, just because, and, and even just in like the different areas of Appalachia, it's, it's mm-hmm. all different just within those, you know, the different hollers and, and that sort of thing. So, um, so that's, that's very cool that you guys are, are giving those stories of voice from, from those particular cultures around the world. Cause I'm like you, I, I'm really ignorant when it comes to, <laughs> um, other countries in their stories, especially. Yeah. Well, we're, we're, we're very happy that these people have reached out to us. So yeah, that, that was the thing they reached out to us and we're like, Oh, Oh, we're international. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) So we're very honored. Very cool. And so you guys have uh, uh, a Patreon you said earlier. Yeah, we do. We do. Yes. And on that, we, um, we do bonus episodes for all our patrons that we put out twice a month, um, full length episodes. And what we'll often do is if we have a guest that has extra stories that don't fit into the real, the actual episode, or they have extra stories they don't want to share with everyone because they might be a little spicier. We put those on the Patreon. And then if, if, or, or we might, go into a little bit more detail about something that somebody talked about. For instance, um, our upcoming episode, we go into a lot of detail about the history of Sedona because our guest was living there at the time, things like that. So it's a lot of fun. And then we also do other things. Um, We have swag for uh, different tiers. We have a, um, like a travel mug that people can get. I don't know if you can see that, but it's got, um, it's got our drawing on it and nice. uh, and yeah, stickers and, and fun stuff like that. So, so yeah, we have a lot of fun with it. It's, it's kind of where we can let loose and be a little bit more casual. It really is. It's so small and intimate right now. And so, you know, we, we have a few patrons and we appreciate every single one of them, but they all feel like our little family. And so we, <laughs> we feel like we can do a little hates after dark, <laughs> true confessions, <laughs> you know, on our Patreon, but we maybe not we're maybe not going to post to the general public. So so everyone needs to go and join so that they can uh, be part of that family. And here's some of those stories. Let's see. Yeah. So um, Shay was one that I had on the show and uh, she talks about how she loves to hear others' experiences, helps to know we aren't crazy and that we aren't alone. Do you find that to sometimes get, kind of be the case with some of the people that um, maybe it's more of a, it's that cathartic experience that really they just sort of want that validation? Yes, absolutely. That's a huge part of it, especially people who, you know, aren't podcasters, aren't really in this world. They just, they have a story and it's, like I said, they've been kind of carrying it around. Maybe they haven't told anyone or where they tell people they're like, oh, that didn't really happen. And they're so excited to have people that believe them and then to know that the people that are listening to it, our audience believes them. There's no reason not to. Why wouldn't Mm -hmm. you? It it makes sense. The story lines up. These people aren't crazy. They just, they just have these experiences. Well, that's a good part of our brand too, is we never ask you to prove it when you're our guest. Mm -hmm. We, We never ask you for evidence when you're our guest. We never ask you, you know, how, how you know you're not crazy or something like that. Like, <laughs> this is just, we're, we're, we want your story. We want your emotions and your experience and your point of view because it's about the story to us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and I like that. I mean, because you, you also keep that unbiased approach, you know, to where in, in you give that, uh, um, you give off that sense of emotion that, I mean, people want to tell that their story to you. Um, and so that's, uh, that's, that's really cool. I know that, uh, when I had Shay on, it was that same kind of situation. She's a musician and, uh, you know, the, the thing she kept saying, she is not, she's a musician. She's not a paranormal investigator. And, um, she kept saying, you know, now, everybody, I'm not crazy, you know, and it's like, you're around, you're, you're among friends. I mean, we all, um, we all have either experienced something or we're here to, to hear your story. So that's, that's a really cool environment that you've created for, for your guests. Yeah. Yeah. We, we want people to feel like they found their people when they talk to us. So, Absolutely. 
Absolutely. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pop up. Um, let's see. I think I've got your website here. I'm going to go ahead and kind of pop that up on the screen okay. as well. And uh, if you want to go ahead and, and again, kind of tell people where they can hear the past episodes and what the best way to find you guys. Absolutely. Well, however you get podcasts, if you listen to podcasts, we are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Overcast, Stitcher, pretty much any pod chaser out there, you can find us on there. And if you don't have a way you regularly listen to podcast episodes, you can always go to our website at homespunhaints.com. And we do have all of our episodes. It's just loading there that, um, that are coming up there. We have all of our episodes on there. And then on each post of the episodes, gosh, that's embarrassing. It's taking so long. Um, it may be <laughs> me. <laughs> oh, so if you can see there, yeah, you can like click on any one of those and there will be a, um, a way that you can listen to the episode on your, your browser. We have an embed player on every episode as well as show notes. And um, sometimes if we have videos that accompany it, that's going to be in the show notes as well. And we also just started a mailing list. So at the bottom of every page, there's um, a place if you just want to make sure that you don't miss any episodes. That's really the only thing that we're, we're sending out right now. It's just, um, hey, a new episode's out. You can always sign up for that. So yeah, please check it out. Um, I have all my little drawings up there as well, as you can see. So, and, and Diana does the show notes and she puts a lot of work into them. She, she goes into a lot of detail and we have a lot of great resources and links too. We have so. a ton of, we have, we're on every social at Homes Fun Hates, but you can, anywhere you want to go, you can get there from our website, homesfunhates.com. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's a very nice website. I mean, I see your, your blog and your episodes and, and then where people can reach out and mm -hmm. uh, share their own. Uh, I think we've actually got a storm rolling in here, so my internet <laughs> is probably lagging. But yeah. Mm -hmm. um, where people can go in and they can submit their story and everything. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, one-stop shop. <laughs> yeah. That's homespunhaints.com. If you didn't catch that, we, uh, luckily nobody else has called that. We were able to grab all of the URLs. So. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you, ladies, so much. I know that uh, I've really enjoyed having you all on and definitely encourage people to go and listen to the different episodes because there is there is such a wide variety of episodes on there. I know I've got mine on there about the uh, monk, which I know a lot of you all have heard. And, uh, you know, one of the things I was just going to kind of bring up right quick was when I was on your show, we actually had some different activity happen then yes. as well and uh, -huh. uh never did find out what that it was but i was really excited that you all actually caught that on your audio because it was loud <laughs> it was loud yes there was banging going on it sounded like someone was knocking at your door trying to get in it was yeah. so cool it was so i was cool. actually in the garage filming on that mm -hmm. one and so um of course, we were talking about the monk. And then, of course, mm -hmm. that led us into talking about the Sunset Hill House because that's where the, the tub was located. And so uh, always it never fails either. And hopefully the Internet won't crash right now, but it, it never fails either. I have technology issues or the wall starts getting banged on or something strange starts happening. So definitely want to check that out. And uh, like I said, I know that uh, Soul Sisters have been on there. And then mm -hmm. there are a couple other folks that are uh, in the uh, chat room right now have been on there as well. So I would definitely encourage everyone to go and check that out. Go find um, their um, uh, YouTube channel, like, subscribe, hit the bell on that and check out their Patreon page. Oh, Chris, I almost you. wore my Soul Sisters shirt, but I knew that it wouldn't show below this level. So <laughs> oh, yes, yes, we have our Soul Sisters shirts, yeah. <laughs> I, have a, I, I have a horror book club that I started in my neighborhood, and I always wear my Soul Sisters shirt to that. So how I'm spreading cool. the word. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Well, unless we have uh, any more questions over here, I'm just wanting to look through here. They were coming in pretty fast and furious. And for some reason I've gotten so tongue tied tonight. I don't know what has been the matter with me, but um, let's see. I was just double checking to make sure that there's nothing else on here. Um, but 
unless something pops up in the next few minutes, we're going to go ahead and and uh, call it a, a night. You know, thank you, ladies, so much for coming on. Thank you all for uh, hanging out with us here in the chat room. And again, this will uh, drop on YouTube here probably within the hour and then on uh, www.mymix104.1 on Saturday night. Um, just a few little business notes. Uh, next week is the... Um, the first annual Harold Young uh, Memorial Scholarship Dart Run motorcycle and all vehicle ride that uh, is named in honor of my dad. We're doing a scholarship. Um, I know you guys have heard me talk about it. We're creating that. Um, he passed away a year and a half ago and um, the money raised on this scholarship goes to uh, fund a student who is interested in the field of science. Dad was a chemistry and physics teacher for 39 years. So, um, so we've got information about that. That's coming up next Saturday. So we're extremely excited about it. We've got the map. We've got the rules. We've got everything posted there. And then the very next week, we've still got to get a little more information on this, but uh, I'm hosting a haunted ride. This will be the third annual ride that will go to uh, the RM Brooks General Store up in uh, Rugby, Tennessee. So um, be, and it will be a free ride and the event at uh, the Brooks General Store is also a free event as well. So come out and uh, enjoy a, a nice fun ride as well as uh, Tennessee's best bologna sandwich on the uh, weekend of May 22nd. So we'll have more information about that as well as some other events that will be coming up in June and July. So we've just been really busy over here trying to get all this information out, um, but we've not got a full schedule published yet. So anyway, so again, thank you guys so much. And uh, I hope that uh, you have a, a a great night and a great rest of the week. Thank you Thank so much you. for having us. This was so much fun. It's always so great to talk to you. So really appreciate you having us on. Absolutely. Thank you guys. And you have a good night. Good night. Good night.